guys, it's Tori and it's time for my December wrap up. This was a really good reading month. I read some really great books as well as a lot of them, which I actually didn't realize how many books I had read until I was going through Goodreads and I was like, wow, I ended up reading a lot of books this month. So we'll just start with the Christmas books I read for the month. First of all, I read A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which I read actually for the Magical Readathon as an urban fantasy. Technically, it's not really an urban fantasy, but it takes place in a city, there's magic, so I counted it because I don't have a lot of urban fantasy, to be honest. I ended up giving this five out of five stars. I always love revisiting A Christmas Carol, and I don't really feel like I need to say much more than that. It's just a cute, good feeling book, and I love the messages in it. I also read Jacob T. Marley by R. William Bennett, which is a retelling of A Christmas Carol from the perspective of Jacob Marley, and this just added to those messages that are already in A Christmas Carol, just made it even better and more amazing as we were able to follow Jacob Marley through his life, learn a little bit about his background, his influence that he had over Scrooge to make Scrooge who he became, and then exactly how he went about procuring, as he says, this opportunity for Scrooge to change and how it influences him as well as a person. It's just so beautiful. I absolutely recommend it. Um, I felt like R. William Bennett did a good job of reflecting Charles Dickens's writing style, which was awesome. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. I don't know if you can find it on Amazon. I haven't really looked. I got this at a local, well not super local, but it's mostly in Utah and a few of the western states. It's not really all over. It's Deseret Book. Um, it's more of a religious bookstore, so I don't know how readily available it is elsewhere, but I definitely encourage you to look it up and see if you can find a copy, especially if you love A Christmas Carol like I do, um, because it's just beautiful. I forgot to mention, I did give Jacob T. Marley also five out of five stars, if that wasn't clear. So anyway, my next Christmas read that I picked up was My True Love Gave to Me, a collection of 12 holiday stories by a variety of authors. This was really cute. I tried to finish this by Christmas. I ended up going a little over because I got sick and so there were a few nights. I was trying to read one a night and there were a few nights where I was just too tired because of being sick. So it took me a little longer than I wanted it to. But that being said, I did really enjoy this. I gave it three out of five stars. Definitely, as usual, there were some stories that really stuck with me and I enjoyed and thought were really cute. And some that I honestly thought were kind of strange, in my opinion. Or just like the characters were a little bit obnoxious but overall it was cute. I also liked on the cover you see 12 couples ice skating. It's the 12 couples represented in the stories which I thought was cute but yeah I really 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 liked this and I recommend it if you're looking for a Christmas short story collection at some point and haven't picked it up. Next continuing with more of what I read for the Magical Readathon I didn't read Jacob Marley or the short story collection for the Magical Readathon because it didn't really fit with any of the prompts but this next one I did and it was actually the first one I read for the Magical Readathon and that was Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I read this as a book over 500 pages which was one of my, my very first prompt. As you know over the past couple months I have been reading it basically for the whole of November and then I finally finished it towards the beginning of December and I really enjoyed it. I think I ended up giving it like a 3.54 stars out of 5 stars. It was good. It was definitely... I can see what people are talking about with like Dickens's slower writing style and putting in a lot of scenes that don't necessarily need to be there. But he was paid by the war word so it makes sense that he would have so much of that. But I did, it did drag a little bit for me. I did really enjoy the story though overall. It was very cute. It was nice to be able to understand a little bit better some of the pop culture references that are made to this because I haven't seen any adaptations or anything ever pretty much. So this was really my first introduction to the story of Oliver Twist and it was very interesting. I liked Dickens's writing style. I really liked Nancy as a character and there's one scene actually that really stood out to me that was between Nancy and Rose. These two women, one, Nancy is from a very, very poor area of society. She basically is living her life in sin by Victorian standards. And so she's very poor and Rose comes from a much higher class. And they have this conversation where Nancy is just like, 
I know you want to help me and you want me to escape this, but I just can't see how I can. And it's really sad because obviously from an outsider's perspective, it's easy to look at Nancy and be like, but you can, you have this opportunity to get out of that lifestyle, to get out of those bad relationships, but she just feels, for her, she feels stuck and feels in love with her abuser in a lot of ways to the point where she feels completely dependent on him and it's so sad and so this conversation between Rose and Nancy about that is really powerful and I really that was a particular point that I really fell in love with this story because of that discussion and so anyway I really recommend this I definitely want to try more of Charles Dickens I think I'll like some of his other stuff a little bit better than I liked this but I still enjoyed this quite a bit. Next I had a prompt to read either Buddy read a book or to read a book that has been read for a book club in the past, whatever book club that may be. And so I ended up picking up Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis. This book was read by my mom's book club a few years ago and she's recommended it to me since so I finally got around to it and I absolutely loved it. I think I gave it like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think I might have just given it a 5 actually but I absolutely loved it. It was heartbreaking. It was beautiful. It definitely made me feel cold. Um, if you don't know this basically follows the story of a girl by the name of Lena who her family is Lithuanian and they are taken by the Russians to Siberia one night and just basically their experiences through the journey and when they get there and a lot of the abuse and things they suffered and it was a really heartbreaking story like I said but very eye-opening it was definitely a part of history that we obviously don't learn a ton about so it was a beautiful beautiful story i love ruta sepetti's writing i love her exploration of not as well-known points of history just like with salts of the sea as well and i would really really like to pick up more by her i know she at least has one book that came out recently and i think she may have had another one before this but I'll have to look that up but I definitely want to read more by her. Next I had to read a book that was either pink or purple on the cover so I ended up picking up Mischief and Manners by Ashton Newbold who is actually a friend of mine that I grew up with. This was her first novel she ever wrote. She wrote it in our senior year of high school and I just hadn't read it. I had read some of her more recent things. I've been actually editing for her. She's been paying me to edit some of her recent things so I've read her writing before. I just hadn't read her first novel yet because I, as I've mentioned before, I served a mission for 18 months in Michigan and during that time I wasn't really able to read so I didn't get around to hers unfortunately but that being said I ended up giving this three out of five stars. This is a Regency romance following a girl named Annette. I always forget characters names. Anyway, Annette who is an orphan. She, her parents died when she was young. She's being raised by her aunt who's very abusive. She mostly takes care of her two younger brothers who are very mischievous, always getting into trouble. And one day the aunt decides that she's going to send them away to this old family friend and the boys have to come back as proper gentlemen otherwise she's going to send them to an orphanage. And so she goes off and meets this family friend she had met when she was younger. They were good friends of her parents and they have a son who's her age and she didn't really like him in the past as a child but they become friends and things go on from there. It's a really sweet story but it was definitely her first one <laughs> um, and I think she would agree with me that it wasn't the greatest of writing. There were a lot of repetitive lines and like really overly cheesy dialogue that she doesn't do quite as much in more recent things. Honestly the character main characters drove me crazy. The male love interest is ridiculously flirty like to the point where if I didn't know he was supposed to be the love interest that you're supposed to trust I would think he was a rake and completely untrustworthy because he's so forward and so flirtatious especially at this time period when that sort of thing was seen as someone being a rake and like he was way over the top that was annoying and that being said that also made the female main character seem really dumb because he was so obviously wanting her because he was so overly flirtatious was constantly finding reasons to touch her there were scenes in here that were literally just there to have a moment of him catching her from falling 
or having them accidentally get too really close or whatever like scenes literally just to do that and she still was like oh he can't be interested in me and then there was one point where he literally pretty much asked her to marry him and it was a very serious situation she was clearly upset and she says no and she's like well he doesn't really feel that way like if I say yes, he's gonna make fun of me. And I'm like, why would you be interested in a guy who you think would make fun of you for saying yes and really meaning it? Like, don't be into him if you think he's gonna laugh at you. Like, that's awful. And <laughs> there was also this thing where she, like, didn't want to fall in love with him because she wanted to t save her heart for her brothers. Like, her parents had taught her to take care of them. And so she was like, no, I have to save my heart for my brothers. But I'm like... In this time period, a woman needs to get married if she wants to get out of her situation. And with her aunt, she needs to get her brothers out. And the only way she can do that without, like, resorting to prostitution and a really poor lifestyle is to get married in a really good way. And so I feel like when he made it clear that he wanted to marry her, I feel like it would have made the story more interesting if she had said yes, simply for the sake of her brothers and getting out of her aunt's house but she still like didn't want to actually fall in love with him because she wanted to sh save her love for her brothers that would make a lot more sense to me but i just feel like this girl was supposed to be this really intelligent really unique kind of woman there was all this like i'm not like other girls kind of thing in this which is one of those things that isn't is kind of annoying sometimes but she's supposed to be very mature compared to the other girls and stuff but she just again, comes across as an idiot. And because she can't see that this guy likes her, she can't figure out how to get her out of her aunt's house. Like she doesn't realize the opportunity that's being given to her by this guy being interested in her. Time period wise, there were a lot of things that just didn't make sense. And knowing Ashton, I feel like she tries to make it, at least the cultural aspects, pretty correct for the time, at least in her more recent ones, she has tried to do that. And so, Anyway, it was just a little tough that way, but I do think it was a good foundation. I thought the ending was really good. I liked the ending. I thought it was fun and really like exciting and then like a really pretty resolution to the romance. I thought that was done very well and everything. I think it was just, again, the characters and then some of the writing things were just a little bit of a struggle for me. And it helped me appreciate how far she's come as a writer, which I think is really fun to see, especially with a good friend, to see her grow and develop in that way, and I loved that. Okay, so after that rant, we have two more books that I want to discuss. The first is The Muse by Jessie Burton, which I gave three out of five stars as well. This one, it was mostly because the first half was honestly really boring, barely anything happened, was not connected to the characters at all. The second half was probably more like a 4 4.5 stars whereas the first half was like a 2.5 stars so we went in the middle three stars it was good I liked the writing I think I'll definitely try the miniaturist at one point this follows two timelines the first in the 1960s I want to say this black woman named Odette I think was her name Odell who is living in London and dealing with a lot of racism struggling to find a job she finally finds a job at an art museum and makes friends with the person who hired her, but also discovers a very rare painting made by a up and coming artist named Isaac Robles who disappeared during the Spanish Civil War and only had a couple of paintings that he ended up making. And then the other timeline follows Olive, I believe is her name, Olive Schloss, as her and her family move to Spain and they end up making friends with a brother and sister, Isaac, and his half-sister, Teresa, and things go on from there. It's a really, really beautiful story, very mysterious, and I did really like the writing style a lot. I never really connected with the characters super well, but I wasn't like averse to them like I connected with them enough to be interested in their development which was good so and the last book I read in this month I might have a little bit of a rant for as well and that is Five Dark Fates by Kennard Blake which I gave a three out of five stars as well I feel like this goes with the whole series in that I love this world so much I'm literally just going to keep the series and possibly read it probably reread it in the future because of the world because I find it so fascinating I love getting to know it a little bit better the history and everything 
of this world. My favorite part of the series was a novella that was about a historical event in this world and so I loved it so much. The characters took me a really long time to connect to. In fact, there was one that I didn't really connect to until this book, but I ended up really connecting with her in the end, really the three queens. This series follows a world in which every generation triplets are born to the queen and each of these triplets have a different power. Once they're born, the current queen leaves and those three kind of become the queens as soon as they are born. They are raised separately for the majority of their lives. Once they turn 16, however, they enter a competition to kill each other, and whoever comes out on top is the next queen. So we follow a generation of these queens, and I loved all three queens. I found them very, very interesting. There was a friend of the queens that I never really connected to, never really liked, to be honest. It wasn't even just not connecting to her. It was, I didn't like her. I thought she was kind of annoying, bland. I felt like she had this great destiny that's discussed. The, this story kind of plays with the chosen one trope a little bit. And so she has this great destiny, but she never does anything that proves that she's the right person for that destiny. Like, she's supposed to be this great leader, and I never ever feel like she's a good leader. I feel like everybody else is leading for her. I feel like she's just there being dragged along and I just never felt like she was right for the job and then by the end she is like all of a sudden put in, in a leadership position and I'm like how did you even get there you didn't do anything like everybody else did everything for you so I just could not understand why her and so the way this series ended was underwhelming to me because there was really awesome moments with the characters I liked and they had this these interesting plot twists but the whole series I felt like there was kind of this idea that maybe there's more to this than meets the eye maybe there's something else that's coming into play maybe this prophecy doesn't literally mean what it th what you think it means and it had all these hints about like previous queens coming into play and all this stuff and then it ended up not really being about the history. It ended up just being a thing that was going on and they had to just deal with it. And there was honestly no connection to the history in the re resolution at all. Like there was just little things that helped them understand a little bit what was going on that happened in the history. You never get any of the whys to anything. Like for example, the mist, if you've read this, the mist starts doing something weird and it doesn't explain why. I mean, it kind of does, but not really, in my opinion. I'm like, it was doing a lot more beyond what it was trying to do, if that makes sense. It still didn't explain why. Like, I still am like, but why? Why was it doing that? Like, it explained how the mist was created and things like that, and like how you could possibly get rid of it, but that still didn't answer anything. Like. That was just so pointless. It was honestly pointless information by the end because you're like, okay, it doesn't matter how it was created because even the way it was created and the way we were supposedly supposed to destroy it didn't work. So like, it, like I just, there were so many things that were like, oh, that's interesting. Like so many, like, again, mentions of previous queens and like mysteries in the history. Well, that was a strange rhyme anyway historical mysteries that could come into play and then it didn't and it was just about what's happening right now and that made me so mad because it just it toyed with my excitement like I was so excited about what it seemed like it was trying to do and then it ended up just going the way it kept saying it was gonna go it was just so disappointing and I just feel like this could have been so much more interesting so much more complex and I honestly think a huge reason why it was such a struggle for me was because I honestly at least from how it read to me I could be wrong about the process of how this was written but to me it felt like the author didn't honestly know what she was doing when she started this because the first book barely anything happens you just pretty much get introduced to the characters second book you're actually getting what you wanted in the first book and then the third book was the best it was like hinting at all these interesting complexities with the history like I mentioned and how it could play into the resolution of this whole series and then the fourth book she was like oh I don't really know how I can wrap this up with that so we're just gonna kind of sort of mention it and bring some elements of that third book in but really it's not gonna matter at all 
and it was just so dumb. I just feel like this series could have gone so much better if it was better plant plotted from the beginning, to be quite frank, or even if there was another book, because there was more that should have been developed and it wasn't and I honestly think the ending should have been different. I think there should have been a surprise in there somewhere. The resolution was pretty much what you were always told it was going to be and so I did not like that and I wanted more surprises and a more fulfilling ending than what I got because again one of the characters that's super big in the end I felt like she was pointless and useless and didn't do anything and literally was just powerful and that's pretty much it and so it annoys me that she was so important in the solution because she was not a great character. Like I said, I am still definitely keeping this series and rereading it in the future for the sake of the world because I really like it and I want it to inspire my own world building in the future for my own books, so. Okay, that is it. This video ended up being a little bit longer than I hoped it would be. Hopefully I'll be able to cut it down, but thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below some of your favorite books you read in December as I would love to know, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!